welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am here today to finally do my book review for The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. I promised to do this way back in June, and there was just so much about this book that I wanted to say that I used it as an excuse to not say anything for a really long time. But I still want to talk about this book because months later I am still thinking about it, which tells you that what the book was doing really, really worked for me. So to start off, the book The Unbroken follows Terrain and Luca. Those are, it's a dual POV. And Terrain is what they call a sand. She is a conscript soldier from a conquered land, was trained up, still is a soldier, and now the Sands, all the conscripts, after fighting many enemies in the north, are now coming home to their home territory in order to enforce the laws of the Baladarian nation. And Luca is the princess, the heir of the Baladarian nation. She technically should be the queen at this time, but the regent, her uncle, has not yet given her the throne. And so both characters are coming from very different places in their lives and in their views. While Terrain and the fellow Sands have always experienced racism because of their dark skin and also from where they're from, but now that they're back in Kazal, not all of the Sands are from Kazal. It, there's several different countries that were conquered. They're in this intermediary place. The Baladarians don't like them because they're Sands, because they're from these countries. And then the Kazalis don't see them as Kazalis anymore. So you have people who are where you were born who look upon you as other, and then you have the people who raised you looking on you as other. Terrain's like, well, fuck you all. She's like, the only thing I care about are my other sands. I don't want them fighting for Baladair anymore. I want them to be able to choose for themselves what they want to do. And that is her motivation the entire book. She never stops wanting the sands to have their freedom and to be able to choose for themselves, to decide whether they would like to try to assimilate back into the society they were born from or go somewhere else. Of course, some of them like Baladair. They want to be seen as Baladarian. And then we have Luca, whose motivation is not quite so straightforward. Again, she's supposed to be queen, but her uncle regent isn't giving her the throne. And instead, she's sent to Kazal because there's some unrest, basically to prove that she can rule, that she can be a good ruler. At the same time, she is interested in some folklore that she's been hearing about a magic system that will help heal. There's a disease that took her both of her parents and keeps coming back in Baladair. And she thinks that the answer to solving this might be in Kazal. So her motivations are twofold. She wants to prove that she is the rightful queen and also to solve a sickness problem. So through her as a character, we get to see that these two motivations conflict a lot of the time. She can't just go for one because she wants both. She has to weigh how much she's going to give and get. For example, with Kazal, she's trying to create peace with the rebellion leaders and have them accept her as the ruler so that she can be seen as the rightful queen. So while she's trying to be a good ruler and solve the rebellion issues. She's also trying to figure out where this healing magic is and how she can utilize it for her own benefits. At the very beginning of the story, both Terrain and Luca are arriving in Kazal for the first time, and Terrain stops a plot to kill Luca, hence getting Luca's attention over the next period of I'm not going to say a matter of days, I think it was probably a matter of weeks. Things happen and Terrain then is accused of treason and Luca 
saves her from death. And so then they're working more closely together and Luca uses terrain to directly work with the rebe uh, directly work with the rebels and the rebellion. And of course, things aren't going to go for either character how they want things to happen. So while there are many side characters in this, the principal plot and action really are revolving around these two main characters. I'm not going to say that the side characters are there just for their convenience because they're very definitely not. Like shortly after Terrain it starts working for Luca, one of the people in her old squad uh, named Pruitt, who is actually her lover, it starts getting really shitty with her and suggesting that Terrain's only working for Luca because they're having sex. Which kind of came out of nowhere for me, but then I realized, okay, there's we're showing that Pruitt is naturally suspicious of everything that's going on and, you know, hates the duality of nature that the sands are being forced to live. This is definitely a book where I would say that the flaws for the characters really the driver of the story. While you see characters making progress on their different motivations, the biggest action happens when they do something they think is right and it ends up being a misstep or they misread the situation. I think that's really why it took me two months to read because I really like these characters and then they're making these choices and I'm like, oh no, this is not gonna work out for you. Oh no. Story Girl likes to ask, do you find these characters lovable? And I'm like, no, but I find them very compelling. I am looking forward to the next book. I mentioned that one of Luca's motivations is finding the healing magic to fix a sickness called the withering. This book has what I would call a soft magic system. The magic comes from your god and your belief in your god and your worship of them. There are some hard rules in order to use the magic, but I'm still going to describing this as a soft magic system at this time because it doesn't seem like you do this, you always get this kind of sort of situation. There seems to be no rhyme or reason of how or why the gods choose someone. In order to use the magic with the, from the gods, it does require sacrifices. While there are characters you know who work the magic, you don't get to see a lot of magic. Magic isn't used to solve problems. It's used as a part of belief and other things. So you're not going to have a huge magical battle at the end of this book, even though there is some magic use. And in this world, uh, every country has their own god, and Baladere's god was a fertility god, made them very rich in farming, and they did something and got rid of their god, because they are now very much anti-religion, and all the places that they conquered, they are trying to stamp out the religion or religious aspects of the communities. Luca didn't actually know that Balader used to have its own fertility god that it worshipped and until through her research in the book. The magic didn't play a huge role in this book, but I think that's more because Terrain grew up Baladarian and Balader doesn't believe in gods, even though Luca believes in magic. I think the next book in the series is supposed to focus more on the magic, at least from the working title that they have out, that's what it seems like. I'm actually very excited for this one. And then I just wanted to talk a little bit about the craft of this book. The societies here feel so real, and that's because C.L. Clark did research. Even though this is a secondary world fantasy series, she researched into histories of societies here on Earth. If I remember right, well, I know the Balladairds are French because of the names, the naming conventions, but I believe like the Kazal are kind of similar to the Moroccans. It, but it made their cultures so vivid and real. And even though I don't know a lot about the history of these cultures, the cultural moments that I had in this book made me want to walk the streets of Kazal and even like see the different quarters. But I really, really enjoyed this book, and I think more people should pick it up and read it. Unfortunately, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it. So yeah, I think the only review of this book I've seen, I 
seen is from Ray Over the Book Finch. So if you haven't read this book yet, I do suggest that you go pick it up. Sale Clark has a masterful way of writing, it makes you feel like you're there and you are a part of the action. So if you have read this book, I'd love to hear your comments down below and see what you thought of it. Thank you and have a great day.